Facebook group so that everybody's got it. And all right, so here's here's the deal. Um, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. I want this to be interactive as much as possible. Um, I want to bring as much value as well. So we've got a whole hour. I'm going to go over kind of what we do, how we run this um, for our daily stand up every day, and and kind of how we've helped teams all over the country stay organized and not miss things. Um, because as you know it's really easy in transactions to miss something. And if our transaction plans aren't perfect and don't have things on them, there's a chance at us missing um, something and it happens often, right? And so the daily standup was created so that we could talk about every file every single day until we got too big and we need to do two different standups, right? But we want to talk about every single file every single day so that we know exactly, exactly where we are in the transaction and what's coming next. And that way we can do a very good job with our clients. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share my screen. So bear with me for a second here. And I'm gonna bring up our daily standup. Um, now, most people, there, there is a big difference between the Soprani consulting and Soprani daily standup than a huddle. Now we've kind of combined them a little bit. Huddles um, have been something that a lot of people have done. It's been done in restaurants. It's been done in, you know, tons of different places, right? For years um, to get everybody on the same page, to get them hyped and excited and ready for the day. This is very different than that. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of show you, this is more transactional than anything else. And I think that gets, that gets confused here, but, and we'll give anybody that doesn't have this, um, you know, we can give you guys this after that and, and we can kind of put them in the group here. But essentially what's gonna happen during a daily standup is we're gonna talk about who went under contract last night. So if we're doing this every single day, Monday through Friday, you guys, the truth is agents, I love you agents, but you forget to communicate to your operations team on a regular basis. And so, you know, often we were having these times where people were going under contract and they, the salesperson's so excited about getting something signed that they forget to go communicate with all the people that are going to do all the things for them. Right. So this was designed to be like, Hey, who went under contract last night? So like, if an agent's on the phone or my preference is to do it on Zoom every day, then they can go, oh, I did. And they get so excited and we get to celebrate them, right? So it's a big piece to this is to actually ask that question every single morning. The next piece is who's currently under contract and where are they in the process? So for example, Barry Buyer, through inspections, we're waiting on the mortgage commitment. Now, what we've done is we've created a generic daily standup document. This acts a little bit like a whiteboard, you guys. There is not one system, one CRM that allows you to see everything in a place. Now you could create a daily standup in Trello and move things through there this way. Or if you are in Keller Williams and you've got command, they kind of have what's like a, a Trello board in there for opportunities. You could have it set up that way. However, here's the deal. You can't really see the dates very easily in, in either of those. <laughs> and <laughs> truthfully, it's just not easy. And so we you know, used to in the business always have these whiteboards where we would write everything up there. And then like when I was going home in the middle of the night, I'd be snapping a picture of my whiteboard so that if somebody called me or whatever, I could go back to it. It drove me nuts. So we came up with this solution was to put something together in the Google Drive so that we could pull it up on our phone because you can get the Google Drive on any phone. And we would pull it up and be able to see where we were in the transaction, right? Now, this has evolved a ton for me. And if we have numerous states on this call right now and, and numerous states that are in our um, in our Facebook group that are watching this right now. And so, you know, I don't, um, I'm going to use the generic one and then I'll kind of show you what we've evolved to, if that's okay, in Pennsylvania, um, so that some people can look at that. 
But listen, you can, you can take this one and adjust it and put whatever important dates are. So like, if you're in a state that only has one deposit and you don't have a second deposit, like delete the line, it's fine, right? If an attorney's ordering title and, and conveyancing that word is used in a lot of states across the country and in some states it's not, conveyancing will, um, it means ordering the payoff ordering any tax certifications or any you know utility certifications that go along with moving in that area. Or some people have what's called a use and occupancy, um, a UNO um, cert that they've got to get or a CO, right? Certificate of occupancy. Sometimes that only happens in new construction, right? There's a number of different things that you can have here. Um, like we don't ever, you know, go to settlement on the seller side without a deed package. I don't want the sellers there, right? So we always order a deed package. That's why that's there. Um, we're ordering a pre-CD. We want to make sure we've received title. So we now have that on ours. Um, and then you can see here, like, is it a buyer or a seller? What's the name? What's the address? We're going to go through the important parts. What's the closing date and time? When's the walkthrough date and time? And, you know, deed package, final CD, pre-CD, all of that stuff. So again, for the most part, every state, we're going through a lot of these things, right? We've got inspections on the buyer side. We're going to reply to it on the seller side. Some people have to add some things in here for other inspections because they just want to see the dates. Here's how it would work. So an admin would come in and they would fill it all out once you go under contract, right? So they get the contract. They look at the important dates. They put in physically all of the important dates in here, as many as they can have, right? Now, in most states, the appraisal is not, and this is appraisal completed, by the way, most states, um, you don't have a date in the agreement that says when the appraisal should be completed. But we know that in most states, we can't get the mortgage commitment or a clean mortgage commitment until we've got the appraisal done. So we put this in here and we're always looking for the appraisal in states that don't have a date for that at least a week before the mortgage commitments due. And then that way we've got a date here. So let me show you what this looks like when somebody's actually working in a little bit. So I'm gonna go into my Teams version. And again, um, you may have some different dates in there. So put in it what you will. And again, if you are watching this anywhere, um, please you know, shoot me an email at lindsay, L-I-N-Z-E-E, -E, at sopraniconsulting.com and I can get you a copy of ours or you can just chat in the Facebook group or in the chat here and I'll, I'll get you guys uh, what you need so that you can build yours out. But this is a working version of it, right? So now you can see we've we froze these lines here so that we can go through very easily. We froze the lines up here so we can you know continue to process through. And you can see that once we receive something, we're gonna mark it complete with an X, right? Now, if we're waiting on something, we've still got dates in there, right? And if it's past due, my team turns it bright red so that it actually is right there for us. Then we've got new construction that'll always stay at the bottom. There's a number of different things that are gonna happen. So this is what a working sheet would look like. And so my team would basically go through and say, you know, 950 Fairfax, we are through everything. We've got everything scheduled, we're good to go. Upland, through everything, got everything scheduled, we're good to go. When we get here, we're gonna say, okay, we've got to schedule the walkthrough for sure. Right. And my admin team would discuss the fact that we're still working on that and that we'll have it done. This is a way, again, to not have anything fall through the cracks, but it's not a way to have massive, long conversations about everything. It should, however, jog our agents' minds around where what's going on. Right. So, in other words, hey, the appraisal's complete. It happened on 2 1. We're still waiting to see how it, you know, what happened with it and we're waiting on the mortgage commitment for 219. That's where we are in this file. So it should jog a conversation around, hey, I'll reach out to the lender, right? My preference is that the admin would say, I'll reach out to the lender today to see if we appraised or you know, in, and when we're gonna get the mortgage commitment or is are we gonna get it on time, right? Or the agent might say, hey, let me reach out to the lender. I'll check on that. But for if we've got an operations person, an admin there, I want them to be the ones that kind of say that because I want them to lead this conversation. I want them to be checking on everything. Now, if you guys have questions around any of that stuff, um, stick it in the chat and I'll answer them. I also do have my... Um, daily stand up running in Facebook. So if you're listening on Facebook, I will um, also answer any questions there. Now, 
we've worked with tons of people, you guys that are settling, you know, thousands of units and we've still put this in place. So I always get the question of like, well, I mean, what if you have like 90 things under contract or a hundred things under contract? That's fine. Let's separate it. So we're going to do a quick call in the morning on the buyer side. We're going to do a quick call in the morning on the seller side. And if we're doing this every day, we're moving the needle forward on these transactions just a little bit every single day. So if you think about that, there shouldn't be long conversations. This thing should take you seconds to go through every property, right? And it should be a total of maybe 15 minutes. And if you're closing a lot of transactions, you've got a buyer side and you probably have a buyer contract close person, right? So the whole team, you know, whoever's got buyer sides, they go onto that call and whoever's got seller sides, they go onto that call, right? And that's what happens is they, they log on for both calls. So of course the calls have to be on different times. If you are a team that's got two um, TCs that are working and they do both sides and they just go back and forth with the files, which we do have a lot of people do, then in that case, people would sign on to those TCs. And I would recommend that somebody works with a TC regularly, but if they're fluctuating back and forth, again, you've got to have two different calls, 15 minutes, and I'm sorry, agents, but you're going to be on there for a half an hour potentially. Um, and so there are things that we can work through and, and kind of change there, right? Because again, I told you that we, we do a little bit of a huddle ahead of time too. And so I'll show you what that really looks like in a couple seconds. And I love that Bridget's here because she's on my team and she helps me run it. And we'll probably bring her on so that we can we can do some fun things and walk you through what it looks like for us. All right. So who's settling this week and next? Now, obviously, you just saw that, you know, if we're going through this, we should know who's settling next week and this week. And those should be our first lines that we're dealing with. Right. So we're going to go over those right away. But then we're going to blow through all these other ones, too, just so that we're on track. I cannot tell you how many agents, when they leave my team, they go back and are like, the biggest thing that I have a hard time with is like my dates. Like you guys used to tell me every morning where I was with things. I knew I woke up every morning. I got on the call. I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening in all my files. And, and that's the biggest thing that they miss leaving me, um, you know, apart from just being around me because I'm so fun, right? Um, all right. So what questions or problems do we have that the lead agent needs to be aware of? Here's the deal. This is probably one of the most important things, you guys. I, when I'm listening to those, you know, properties, I am not letting my operations team just blow through it. Now I might be looking somewhere else or whatever listening, but you know, Bridget could tell you there are a lot of times when I jump in because I hear something. So if I hear something for four days in a row, right. And nobody's figuring it out. That's Lindsay's turn. Hey, why aren't we figuring this? What's going on? Do I need to jump on? And then I will schedule a call with my agent and or my ops team or both and try to figure it out. So there are a number of times that like we get through our daily standup and then I'm on the phone with an agent and, you know, Sean, who does a lot of the contract to close and we're figuring out how to move the needle forward or what's going on. Why can't we get that payoff or whatever? And then I'm jumping in to help problem solve and figure it out. This is probably the most important thing. So operations people, if you are sitting here and you've got a fun loving agent that is hard to pin down and they're, you know, never really fully focused, we have to ask them like, please give me 15 minutes of your time where you are fully focused on this. And I want you to be present and don't do anything else. It's only 15 minutes. Let me have your attention so that you know what's going on on your files. When they start bringing new agents on, it's really important for them to be able to hear things so that they can fix things, right? Another big key, if you're on a team here, is that when we do this, this stops all conversation around agents being able to say to you or to the lead agent, I don't get any of your time. I don't know what's going on. I never see you anymore. I never hear from you. Every single morning, if we're signing on, they see the lead agent, they see the ops team, they have the ability to come here and say, I have this problem, I have this question. And then we can push through to have those conversations later on that day. It sparks that conversation, it makes it a priority. And every day we're meeting with them, right? So nobody can leave my team saying, well, I didn't know what was going on or you never gave me time or whatever. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I, I, I need your time in that morning call, I'm going to make time for them. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a chance for them to raise their hand because at the end of our conversation, we're always going to say, hey, 
What do you guys need the admins to do? How can we help you? How can we serve you? What does this look like? And that way, there again, there's no way for them to come back and, and tell us that we're not doing that. All right, we're gonna have a goal review. So if you have time, this is a good time to go, hey, we've got 10 under contract right now. Our goal was to have 20, so we need 10 more, right? So again, what's our monthly goal? Where do we stand currently? How many more do we need to hit it? What are we doing differently to take to make that happen? So in other words, we might say, hey, do we have any cash buyers out there that we can go find them a home? Or maybe our ISA team needs to focus on this listing area to get another listing for that buyer who's looking in that neighborhood or whatever, right? So if you have time and you're, you don't have too many transactions, this is a great conversation to have every day. Because again, it's moving the needle forward on your goal. And so it's really important. And then lead generation, if you are somebody who cannot get your agents to put input their numbers or their contacts that they're making every day or whatever, we found that actually asking them every morning, how many calls, how many contacts, how many appointments, we would note, we would note that as an admin team so that they didn't have to. Okay. Now, under contract does not just mean pending, you guys. It also means coming soon, right? We just signed a listing or we just signed a new buyer that's gonna go out with us. Now, there's not nearly as many things to do with a buyer, right? But there is for a new listing. And so we talk through all of the things, you know, was this, is there staging? When are photos and videos getting done? What is the lockbox? And our admin, again, they're gonna blow through it really quickly. Here's where we are, this is what we're doing. And they go on to the next one. And if they need to talk about one of them or there's a problem, they can schedule the call afterwards to say, hey, let's catch up on this tomorrow. Again, if you're doing this every single day, you're moving stuff off of your plate very easily and very quickly. And you're all on the same page because you're talking about it every morning. We, of course, are going to have two tabs down here. We're going to have the settled tab and we're going to have a terminated tab because we want to move anything off of pending into settled and keep track of it or move it into terminated if it didn't go under, um, if it didn't uh, go to settlement. All right. So hopefully we're good there. Right now, I don't look like I have any um, questions yet. If you have any, put them in either of those places so I can get you the answers as, as I keep going here. Now, one of the other things that we did, so a lot of people like the huddle. So you're just going to see me for this right now. Um, a lot of people like a huddle because they like to do the rah rah, get excited, and and you know move on your with your day. Now, if you're like me, I'm not necessarily your rah rah type of girl. I'm the one who comes up with this lovely. Uh, <laughs> let's go over all of our transactions and, and be um, thoughtful and purposeful with our morning. So, but what we did is we came up with every single morning, um, something different. And so our Monday morning is motivational Monday. I'm going to bring something motivational. So um, sometimes I'll talk about things that are going on in the world and I'll talk about how we can be motivated around that, right? So when COVID hit, hit, we were talking about the stats. We were talking about what was happening. We were talking about feelings that were happening with people and how we could lead gen around those feelings and what that would look like. And, you know, we did a lot of that stuff during that time. Other times we're going to talk about somebody like Roger Bannister, right? Who was the first person to run the four minute mile. And once he did it, multiple other people did it, right? So I'm going to talk about like, hey, if, if Elon can go and settle 60 some transactions, which he's on here and he's amazing if you want to connect with him, but if he could do something big like that, then, you know, you can too, right? And we'll talk about motivating people and, and how to get to the next level. Tuesday and Thursdays are script Tuesday, script Thursday. So I'm going to pick a script and we're going to run it right then and there. So I will either be the agent who, um, you know, is, I'll, I'll play the agent because it is hard to script practice when you're on a team and like have to do that. Or I do, I'm fortunate to have a number of people that are very good with scripts and very good with clients. And so they'll jump in and they'll be the, you know, the agent and I'll be the seller or the buyer, or we'll have somebody else on the team be the seller or buyer. And we just do it. And here's the deal. Do I cycle through them and come back to other ones? Yes. How long is it normally for motivational or script or Wednesday's winning Wednesday? What's our, what's our wins for the week? What did we win with? So, Hey, I got this person under contract. It's great. Or I, you know, finally, lost this many pounds like it can be a personal thing personal win or it can be a professional win right friday is our freedom friday and i'll talk about that in a second but again you know if you've got all these things happening in the morning 
five minutes max, right? Sometimes we'll go a little bit long, but I wanna to try to keep it within five minutes so that we get through it and then move on to what's under contract and who went under contract and all of those things that you just saw. Mm -hmm. All right, so Freedom Friday, we came up with uh, for Bridget to do, and she's on here and you guys can reach out to Bridget. Um, her email is B-R-I-D-G-E-T-T, -T, no E at the end at sopraniteam.com. So Bridget does Freedom Friday and she will come up with something to ask, right? So we had to tell her what our autobiography was um, with, you know, what the name of our autobiography would be if we wrote a book or this morning um, we had to say, which actually this was really hard for our team, but sometimes it's really fun. And sometimes they just struggle um, to be honest. But, you know, sometimes like to this morning, she said, you know, who like who are you as a famous character in tv or a movie right or bridget give me two other examples of what they might be able to use uh so what is your favorite part of like your daily routine is one that we did one time and that was really fun because people kind of appreciate their day uh and then something simple like what would you do if you won the lottery yeah. and it just kind of inspires them to think about all of these goals and things and fun stuff about themselves Yes. So Bridget in her former life was a camp counselor and loves doing those things. <laughs> and so she's awesome with that kind of stuff um, and just keeps it fun on Fridays, right? Because it's Friday. Like, let's move into the, you know, weekend. Let's have a little bit of fun together. Let's laugh, especially with COVID, like being able to jump on every morning, see each other. But that's another thing. Bridget's also the camera police. So right now we'd all, we'd be like, all of you guys turn on your video, engage with me. Cause I don't know if you're listening to me and engaging, or if you're sitting there typing an email and sort of listening to me, which is what 90% of the time you're doing when you're doing something like this, right? And you're not visible. So I always make, I try to make my team engage with us. I don't care what you show up. I, I show up looking like I don't have makeup on sometimes. I'm a hot mess but I don't care. I still show up that way as the leader because I want them to engage with me every single morning. And I want them to, you know, I want to see their faces. I want to see if they're stressed. I want to see if they're okay. Cause then I can, as a leader be like, are you okay? How can I help you? What's going on? Right. And I can call them on that. So cameras are really important. If you do it on the phone, again, you don't know, you can't see somebody. So you, you have a hard time kind of you can maybe hear it in their voice. They're not okay, but other than that, it's gonna be hard. So again, picking something for every day and kind of figuring it out. Scripts are very important though. So there are a lot of teams, you guys, that are out there that every morning they do a script and that's what they do. They go over a script, so, you know, what's our open house script? What's our you know expired script? What's our FISBO script? And again, that gives you the ability, if you're the leader or an ops person, you have the ability to say every morning, you're hearing a script that you can use in your lead gen, right? Because this business is a lead gen, you know, business. That's all we do every day, all day long. And a lot of people don't get that. So agents will come on our team and it's like, they think they're just going to start opening doors and showing homes. No, you're going to get on the phone and you're going to call a bunch of people, right? So doing a script every morning is really good too. Um, but again, you know, you have to kind of plan those out a little bit. You have to think through that ahead of time, right? Um, if you're going to do Freedom Friday, you kind of have to have a little bit of a list or you can go online and be like, what are fun topics to ask groups, right? And, and have that list available for yourself. Um, if you're going to do, you know, Motivational Monday, have a list of things that you feel like might be motivational for people, right? Because that's, that's where you're going to start to win. Okay. That is our daily standup. Those are the things that you can go over or you should go over every day. And I will tell you that the very most important thing truly is that pending list. It's really important to get through everything, to really see where people are, to see where they are in the transaction. And it gives you a chance to hear somebody's stress. Now, what's happening right now, especially now with COVID is these agents are all sitting at home all day long doing work right? And that was happening before too, but it's happening more than ever before. They're alone. And if they're on a team, what value are you giving as a team, right? Every morning when they show up, I am bringing the value as best as I can for only 15 minutes in the morning. And of course, then I'm going to check in on them regularly. And we do 411s and, and a lot of things to keep the team engaged. 
Um, but again, you know, I need to know where they are. And if I have somebody show up and their voice is, you know, shaky and they're not okay, you know, and we're talking about inspections or whatever, I know as a leader, I need to jump on the phone and be like, how can I help you? Don't do this alone. What's going on? Let's walk through this, right? I can troubleshoot. But if we're all just at home and we never talk all day, how would I ever know what's going on with them? So this helps you take it to the next level. You can see if somebody shows up stressed, you can see if somebody shows up upset. I've seen when somebody shows up, you know, Bridget and I've seen it a number of times, somebody shows up and they're just not right. They're just out of it, right? Maybe they just had their dog die or maybe somebody's really sick in their household. It allows me as the leader, as long as their camera's on and Zoom to be a leader and to kind of, you know, figure out how to love on them for that day and take it to the next level. So I'm a big believer in my daily standup. I'm a big believer in going through every transaction because then I, as the leader, know every single thing that's going on there. And so does my operations team. There are no questions. There's nothing missed. And we haven't had a, a big problem in years. Um, we also haven't had an upset client ever. So it's been a big reason why a lot of the teams that we consult get organized and they take it to the next level. It's one of the first things we teach. So hopefully that helps. Um, that is our daily standup. Now, because you're here and we've got an hour, I want to give you guys a chance to ask any questions around this. So one, you can unmute. Um, or you can chat your question. And then on Facebook, you can chat your question. I see, um, Kaui, yeah, you've got it um, back from consulting a while ago. Um, so I would say, but if, if for some reason you want a new one, I can give it to you too. Or like mine with my team, I can give that to you. Um, go ahead and ask any questions that you have around the daily standup. I am gonna take this time to talk through a team meeting agenda as well. Um, and how to kind of run some of that, because I think that's just as important. Um, we do our team meetings weekly. And so, um, and we do them every single Monday, because I want my team to start out every Monday with a clean slate. I want them to be able to, you know, take, take it to the next level. And if we start on Monday, um, it really helps to do that. So let me just check and make sure I have no questions at the moment. I don't think I do. All right, and I have no questions here for any of you guys. You're good, yes? You could do a thumbs up with your reactions if you want that are like, yeah, I'm good. All right, I'm gonna keep going. If you think of a question or something that you wanna know or what I've done, um, you know, differently to like, you know, change these things or if you have any thoughts around, hey, I don't like the way you do that, but I, I think I'd like it this way. Let's talk about that because that would be great. Um, I can also tell you I've, Maybe I should say this before I go on to the team meeting. I have had people come into my organization um, and we do the stand up in, in Soprani Consulting um, with where all of our recruiting clients are at, almost every day as well. Um, and what problems we've got out there. So this is a thing I do. I've done it in all of my companies always, um, whether it was with the Society of Motion Pictures and Television Engineers or right now, um, it's just something manager wise that I had always done. Um, and I, um, I will tell you, I've had people come in and say, oh, it just, you know, it feels this way or it feels that way, or it's, um, you know, it just, it's this drawn out thing in the morning. Um, and my, I used to take that to heart and be like, maybe I should make it more light, or maybe I should make it better. Or, you know, maybe we should change it and not go through the files. I can tell you the moment we chose to not go through files in both companies, just to see, can we just have a light hearted fun, whatever. Then I, as the leader had a million more questions, a million more problems all through the day. And they, you know, couldn't problem solve things properly. Whereas in the morning as a leader, I can knock those out you guys within the first 15 minutes of my day and move on for the rest of my day. And I don't ever have to look back barely ever. And that is what matters. And I will also tell you, like I said, when I, when I removed it, everybody was like, we need it back. I don't even know where I am. I, this is so hard. Even though they have dates on their calendars for important things, they can go into brevity anytime and see what the important dates are. You know, they can go in their contract and look like there's all, the dates are everywhere. Right. And then we're going to email them when they have things coming up too. like they, they still couldn't handle it. And so we have, um, 
continually come back to this. And like I said, all across the country, it's the one thing that everybody's like, the daily standup. It's totally saved my business. I don't have any problems anymore. I can get on the road and be done for the day and feel good. I connected with the team. I had some fun in the morning and I moved on. It is, it's what's really helped. Okay. So let's look at a team meeting, um, just to, you know, something that you could use, right? This is just an example of something. So you could start your team meeting out with what's your win of the week, right? Each, each team member doing it. Now we do that every Wednesday, no matter what. So we actually have removed this because we talk about that on Wednesday mornings in our daily standup. Um, we like to do win of the month. You know, sometimes the management can nominate somebody at, um, for the win of the month. And then this is all spelled wrong. So I got to fix it while I'm here. Um, and then each person, you know, can kind of nominate somebody too. What we have changed this to is the big deal. And every single week we do, you know, who's the big deal. And then we um, move forward with the big deal of putting them on social media and putting them in a bunch of different places. Um, so the big deals definitely, you know, become a really cool thing. We do it weekly. We celebrate that person and the person that was nominated has to then celebrate and nominate the next person. And then, you know, they have to say why. So in other words, um, we might say, hey, you know, Lane got his first contract, yay. And, and we celebrate him and he's the big deal for the week because of that, right? Um, we're always going to look at numbers. We should at least look at numbers, right? So we have now implemented, we've always had a leaderboard and we were using Sisu for a while. Um, we've stopped using Sisu. So, um, that is an amazing program. I do love it. It, um, will text message your agents every single day and ask for their numbers. Um, I still could not get my agents to just put them in, even with an app that was like telling them every day. So again, you know, we're, we're looking for their numbers. We're asking them um, daily. Like we, we actually have a text thing now where we say ding every time we set an appointment and then our ops team puts the ding, they put the person and the name and everything into our system. And then they follow up with the agent to see, what more information, like, can we get the phone number? Can we get the email? All those things. Um, but again, you want to do a leadership, you know, a, a numbers review. And so what we did is we, we put a leaderboard together so that we can see every single week who the leader is and um, in, in the different categories. And so let me show you a little bit of what that would look like. Um, by going over that every single week, by the way, it has prompted our um, our people to then do more and be more competitive because they can see where they stand on the leaderboard. So let me just move this in here. So you, we go over our numbers and where we are. And, and right now this is what we've closed and, and where we are for you know February and March. We go over our sources of business, where everything's coming from. And then we go over our leaderboard which I guess I want to get there. It won't let me open it. Why? God. Huh. Sorry, guys. Give me two seconds. I'm just, I'm so weird. <laughs> All right. Let me go to my leaderboard. These are all of our different numbers here. And then what we do is we're going to look at closed volume and where everybody stands, the closed units, pending volume. So who's going to be the winner? Our dings, that's appointments. And now every single month, we actually, um, we're going to celebrate those people. And every quarter, whoever the winner is, is going to get gift card uh, money from us. Um, and so the top three winners are going to receive money. And that's how we go over our numbers. And that's what, what it looks like for us. Um, again, you can go over, you know, current active listings if you want, things that are under contract. But again, that's been removed from my weekly team meetings because we're going over that every single morning. Um, so there's no need to have to go over that again, right? Um, again, we can look at the numbers on where we were for closings. We can have a goal. You can do a, I do highly recommend that there's a tip or a training of the day. So we should be moving the needle forward in our business in so many different areas. And the truth is we should always be getting bigger and better. And so and if you're an operations person, my hope is that you're tweaking things all the time too, right? So like if you have a 36 touch, 
you should be sitting down with everybody and showing them what's happening this next month during the 36 touch, what things are going to happen. Or if you're like us, we have our telethon. We're going to talk about what item we're giving away and when it is and, and what communication is going to happen around that, right? Um, you know, very important to do a tip or a training or like, hey, we've built this action plan. So like, you know, we're redoing our 10 year um, buyer plan right now for with my team. And so we're going to talk about what the new 10 year buyer plan is. My team is going to get a chance to see every card that's associated with it once we actually have it fully completed. And they'll see, you know, what presents people are getting on year three and year five and whatever. Right. Um, and then we actually have taken this an extra step further. And now every single week, well, every week we try to do it. Some weeks we don't get to do it, but we're going over numbers um, and we're looking at the different counties. And so I've got Chester County, Delaware County, Montgomery County, um, or no, wait, not Montgomery County, Newcastle County, because we, we were in Delaware as well, and then Philadelphia. And we're looking at the numbers every single week to see what's happening there. And then we're looking at month over month, right? So like we're looking at what happened in 2019 versus 2020 in November. And then what's, you know, we were looking at January of last year and January of this year. And, and we're talking through those things, right? And it gives me the chance to talk through what um, I believe is happening in the market and what my team needs to know when they're out on listing appointments or if they're, you know, out um, on buyer consultations, it gives me a chance to educate them. So we should be doing some kind of education around the market and what's going on um, every single week. Um, that is my, my hope for you guys. And then last but not least, you guys, if you don't have a mission and a vision and your values and your culture kind of figured out, you really, you need to gain clarity around that. And the truth is, you know, we really want to help um, these people understand our mission and our vision. And if we don't have clarity around that, they don't have clarity around that. And then we're just selling homes. And we're not doing anything else, right? So every single week we we do revisit. Um, there are some weeks we forget, but for the most part, and you can see this is on my my list. It's always at the bottom here to revision that or to revisit that my vision is building wealth through real estate, empowering through education, and leading by example. And our mission is to be the real estate team of choice to inspire the change that removes the stress from a real estate transaction and to be the force that makes our industry better. And then we just added to give abundantly. So Bridget, we need to add that on here <laughs> um, because now we are actually going to, for every home that we sell, we are going to give to the, um, to the uh, charity that um, my agent cares the most about, right? So if they wanna feed the hungry, we're going to now we have this cool little emblem that we're going to put on to the listing when it sells and we're going to say because of selling this listing we were able to provide 10 meals um to kids in africa or whatever right and and that um is starting to move us in the direction of of what matters the most to us um for our values we tried to come up we these were our values and we picked them and then we tried to come up with a um way to remember them and so we've got fat Gail was the only thing that we could really um, figure out, which at some point maybe we'll try to change, but it helps us remember that's fun, authenticity, teamwork, generous. We want to all be generous and we want to be held accountable, um, have integrity and have a desire towards leadership. And then in our culture, um, our culture is dramatically impact the lives of others by creating an opportunity to build a six figure income in one year's time through helping others buy, sell and invest in real estate. And we've added to give abundantly there as well. So those are the things that we go over. And that's what we talk about every single week so that we can, again, continue to move that needle forward. You know, we want to create some competition, healthy competition. We want to create some fun for them every morning and every week when we're on our team uh, meetings. And we want to try to take the business to the next level. And I believe that these things are what help you take your business to the next level. Um, revisiting the vision, revisiting the mission, revisiting the numbers and being a person of numbers. You know, we, unfortunately, we've got to know what it takes to, to get us to the next level. There are no sales businesses out there that I know of that don't look at how many phone calls did you make? How many appointments? And yet in real estate, 
we've just deemed that impossible to do, right? Um, you can't run a business, a true business without knowing exactly how many leads came in, how many were followed up with, how many converted to you know, a buyer or a seller. Like you truly can't run a business well that way. Otherwise it's just, I, I hope they're selling, right? But if you are running it that way and it's just, you know, we don't really know what we're doing, that's okay. If you're talking every morning to every person in your daily standup, and you kind of are feeling out where they're at, right? Then you, then you're good. So you saw that I still have people on my um, list that they don't have anything on the board yet. They haven't closed anything, right? Now we know that they're working with buyers and sellers because we're meeting with them every single week with a 411 to see where they're at, what's going on. And so we're having those conversations weekly and we know that we have to get them into production. But again, if they see that there's zeros there, it's going to either push them out of the business because they know that they're not you know, able to keep up with everybody or it's going to push them into production, one of the two. And so I just challenge you guys to bring those numbers, hold people accountable and to um, start having regular meetings that are purposeful and really take you to the next level. So I really hope that this has helped you. I hope it makes sense. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do is stick some of the daily stand-up stuff in the Soprani Consulting All-Stars group so that you can pull it off too if you need it. I think a lot of people that have worked with us in consulting um, have it and are using it, um, or if you're not using it to the best of your ability, like now's the time, let's get it up and running because we're not fully in the spring market yet, but we're close. And if you can get that all created and all of your contracts in there and start to use it, it's going to keep you so on track and then you can pull it up on your phone or wherever you are anytime and be able to see where you are in the file as long as you keep up with it. So I hope that that has helped. Um, let me look at some questions here and anybody who has any questions, let's take the time. I'm going to sit here for a little bit. Um, let's stick them in here. Um, Susan, let's see here. What do you got? What is rule about agents attending? Uh, it, um, it's a showing comes up for them. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great question. Susan's basically asking me, um, what is the rule around like attendance on this? Now there are times when like, and I don't, I, I'm not okay with them scheduling a, a showing. Now, if it's the only time they could do and the house is going to fly off the market, like it is what it is. But for the most part, you can get through this and then move on to the next thing pretty easily. We do our stand up at 7.55. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't make it at eight. There was some reason with the 15 minute thing. Like we wanted to be done by 8.10 ish. 8.15 ish so that we could move on um, and go lead gen pretty quickly. And uh, a lot of us felt like, you know, once it hits 8.15 and on, like we're all right with calling. Uh, to be clear, I'm okay with calling people at 7.30, but 90% of my team is never okay with that. But I just don't care because um, I like to get business. So <laughs> there's, there's that. And I don't want anybody beating me out of the gate either. Um, but we all as a team decided that 815 was that we feel good about calling people at that point. So we made ours at 755 and Susan, um, they're not allowed to miss it. If they're sick, they can text us. Um, they can text the ops team and say, hey, you know, I'm not feeling well, I'm not gonna be on today. Um, sometimes they don't and guess what? They get a text from me or my ops team immediately and it is, hey, how you doing? Are you all right? Do what's going on? And I'm all over them. Um, that's just me as a leader. Like you missed my stand up. Are you dead? What's going on? You didn't tell me what's happening. Did you oversleep? <laughs> all over them. If they don't like that as a leader, then they need to find a new leader because that's just who I am and that's how I show up. So, you know, good or bad. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so if, um, there are times when like inspections or whatever, um, have to be done in the morning because that was the only time the inspector could do it or whatever, a, okay, just let us know. And so they communicate. And then what happens is they are responsible for catching up with my ops team, not me, um, later. In addition, I have these recorded every single morning. So I can also go back through my Zoom and see one, did we have a really bad conversation and something weird happened? It allows me to go back and revisit the conversation and be like, ooh, I showed up really bad that day or ooh, I, uh, you know, this happened or whatever. I mean, listen, we as leaders also have to give ourselves some grace because we don't always show up perfectly. Um, there was a morning when I got really mad at my team for not showing up and they heard it 
and they heard it that morning, but I was able to go back and listen and be like, Ooh, was that really bad? Like what happened there? Um, and so better or worse, again, they're recorded so I can go back. I can also go back and look at attendance. Like, hey, this person has missed it every single morning. They've just not shown up. If I know I've got somebody like that, guess what? You don't get to sit in an appointment with me and talk to me, the leader, about how I'm not doing things for you and I'm not showing up and I'm not whatever. Guess what? You haven't shown up to my morning call every single day. And when you signed up to be a part of this team, you signed up for better or worse to show up. Um, and you know, is it a requirement because you're an independent contract? Nope. But I'm also not going to have my ops team having to go chase everybody down all day long because you didn't take 15 minutes out of your morning to show up and to be present and to go through the daily standup. So, so there's that. Um, and if it comes up over and over again, then we're we're talking about it in the 411, um, which happens weekly as well. So that's a way again to, to keep it going. All right. Hopefully that answers a lot of those questions. What else do we have? Um, this really helped me refocus. Love it. Um, the spring's gonna explode. You guys, I mean, this is listen, we are believing that this is going to be the busiest year out of any year we've ever had. Um, we all thought that was going to happen in 2020. It still did, even with a massive pandemic. So I anticipate this year to be real nuts. Um, and then we don't have a crystal ball, right? We don't know what's going to happen in 2022 and beyond. But um, I can tell you that if you implement this one thing, you will stop the chaos that is your life and you will start to feel organized and you'll be able to go jump into a file and see what's going on and you'll be able to see, you know, what's coming up and it'll be easy. Now, I like people to take an extra step and still put it on your calendar. And I know that that's three different places that you're putting it, right? So we've got it in Brivity and we're moving our tasks in Brivity. We have them all apply as zero days from start and then we move the tasks to two days before the important date is due. So we've got it there, one check. We've got it on our calendar. I just think that's important, check number two. And on the daily standup, check number three. And we're looking at it every day. And we have not missed a date in four years of my business. And when I was running other businesses with some of you guys know about, I didn't miss any dates there either. So, all right, good. Everybody's good. If you have questions, you know where to reach me. Stick them here. Hi, Beth. It's so fun to have you here. Um, anything that you guys need that we can help you with, I want you to put questions in there. This is a safe space. If there are other things that you feel like you need training on, we're going to start doing this on a regular basis. Um, and so if there are other things that you need that are really important to you, let me know and we will jump that ahead. But the daily standup is probably one of my very favorite things if you can't tell. <laughs> and so hopefully this was good and we brought value this morning and let me know how else we can do that, okay? All right, I'm gonna stick around for another minute or two in case anybody has questions. Feel free to unmute, stick them in the Facebook, stick them in here. Otherwise I'll jump out if you guys start to pop off. Jen, I'm so, so glad. So glad. <laughs> Bridget, you have to say that, but thank you. Any questions? I'm here. Otherwise we'll let you all disappear and I'll just keep talking to myself. Yes, so Beth, it is recorded. Um, it's gonna stay in here. So go back and listen um, to the beginning and Erica should have everything from years ago. Um, but yeah, go go back um, and I'm gonna stick the uh, generic files in here so that everybody's got them and they can pull them. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is a Lindsay Soprani daily standup, not the normal huddle or whatever that everybody else does, so. Um, any other questions? All right, let me know how else we can help you guys. I really appreciate you spending time with us. I'll talk to you later. Bye.